In today's video, we're going to be painting up a female orc from the Dungeons & Dragons WizKids range. So, what we'll be doing first is we're going to be starting off with our half-orc female's flesh, and to do this, we're going to be using Scaly Hide. So, Scaly Hide is quite a nice uh, light green that we're going for here. So, I want to have... It's sort of like... Uh, I do most of my orcs in a very dark green skin tone. I felt like... Um, I might lighten up uh, a female orc just to give them a slight variation, but again, this is totally up to you what type of green you use, but I'm going to go off this nice uh, light green here, and just covering all our flesh areas here with just a bit of green. Now she does, is in the miniature sort of pre-painted look, she is supposed to have an undershirt, but for this I'm going to be doing her undershirt completely green, because it's barely noticeable, and I think it's going to look a little bit nicer as just being all f a flesh colour. So just being careful here now. Then once we have all our skin dry, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with plate mail metal. And we're just going to be using the plate mail metal just to paint the blade of our sword that she's wearing. So just a nice quick coats over here, just covering the sword and just a teeny bit of the top of the handle here. We're going to be using some different colours uh, on the sword as well. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to use Oak Brown. Now this is a nice, uh, really dark brown. I'm going to be using this for her uh, for her pants. So we want to... Uh, I'm going for a super dark brown here because I'm going to... Since she's wearing leather armor and a few other leather pieces, um, going with one leather over the whole lot, it's just going to uh, muddy a lot of that in together. So that's why I'm going with a super dark brown... Uh, you may wish to go for a black, but I'm going to go with a super dark brown for uh, her pants here. And we're going to be using a, a bunch of different browns here for all the different uh, leather types and giving it a lot of variation rather than sticking with one brown for all the leather regions. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to leather brown and we're going to be using leather brown to paint up her leather chest piece she has on. So. We want a nice good coat of this on her. It's being pretty careful now to avoid some of the areas where we've already painted. But if you do paint over her um, skin, it's not that big a deal. Just wait for it to dry and then come back over it with our original skin color. But it's also a good way to just practice um, getting everything nice and neat as, as much as you can anyway by just doing little bits like this and trying to avoid painting back over areas we're already painted. And then of course, don't forget to use our leather brown that we've already used for her um, her little gauntlets as well. So we also want to do these little side pieces here as well. I'm also going to be doing these in the leather brown. Then once we have all that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on with a fur brown, which is more of an orangey brown than our leather brown and then it's a lot lighter than our dark brown that we have for our pants. So this fur brown we're going to be using to be painting up the boots of our female orc. So just giving a nice coat here, just trying to avoid the areas between the pants and our boots here. So just keeping it as neat as we can. And also using this fur brown is going to give us a nice little pop of a brown color that is still a brown, but making it that slight orange it's just going to add in a lot more uh, color difference on our miniature. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with a desert yellow. And we're going to use this for the strap on her belt. Now, it's a leather belt. Now, usually I would do this in a brown color, but since I've given her brown armor and she has so much brown on her already, we're going to break this up a little bit using this desert yellow color, which is just going to add a bit more pop and... It's going to stop us from just having everything completely brown just by adding in a splash of different color. I also like to mention too that with our fur brown, I just painted her. Uh, she has a little pouch on her as well. It's a big pouch just above her leg. I've also painted that in the fur brown as well. So if you're doing this miniature, don't forget to do that in the same color. But again, now we're just trying to keep it nice and neat, trying to keep on that. Uh, leather straps uh, painting line just to keep it as neat as we possibly can. 
Then once we've completed that, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with Brassy Brass from Vallejo, and we're just going to be using that to paint just the pommel of her sword, just the very bottom of it. And I'd like to mention too that I also used the our dark oak brown that we used before on her leather pants as well to paint the handle of our blade. And then we're just coming in now with just a little bit of the Brassy Brass, just to paint the end, give it a nice pop of colour on there as well. So just being nice and neat, trying not to paint over everywhere else we've already painted on our sword and just avoiding the skin and stuff as well. Then once we have that completed, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on with matte black. And we're going to be using the matte black to paint our half-orc females here. Now you may want to do this a brown or a blonde colour, um, but for me I'm going to go with this nice dark uh, black colour. Now, the reason why I'm going with a straight pure black than a than say a lighter colour like Necromancer Cloak, like I usually use, use which is a, a very dark grey, is I want that super black here, um, like a lot of orcs seem to have in uh, traditional fantasy, uh, but it's going to just make it pop a lot, um, just by having that super dark black colour on there. So also now just being super careful uh, about painting around everywhere else, this black is going to really... Uh, cover up anything else that we've already painted, but again, don't worry if you do, you can always just wait for it to dry and then paint over the original colour. You might need to go with a couple of layers because it is pure black, but you will be able to get it back to the original colours uh, everywhere that you've painted over. So just be mindful of that. So once we have completed our female half orcs here, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to move on with a uniform grey, and we're going to be using this uniform grey to paint up the base of the miniature. Our female half orcs is on this sort of uh, stony type texture so that's why I'm going with the uniform grey here and it's also going to give us a nice uh, difference in colour than if we had gone with another brown. So just adding in little bits of splash of colour like this to really highlight all the pieces of the miniature. Okay and now with that done we're finished with all our base colours so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in now with a flesh wash and we're going to be using the flesh wash to cover all of our female half orc skin. So giving it a nice uh, layer here of our flesh wash, really getting into all those uh, recesses in there and stuff and just really pushing it around. So the, the best method that I find to use with a lot of washes is to put a big blob on your uh, brush, place it on and then start moving it around a little bit. And then if it starts pulling in certain places where you don't want it to pull, you just come back in with your uh, brush that you've just wiped off slightly and then dab it onto the area where you don't want too much of the wash and it'll soak it straight up. Okay, so once our flesh wash is dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with Strong Tone and we're going to be using the Strong Tone wash to cover the entirety of the rest of our uh, half orc female miniature and we're going to also be just avoiding um, her sword as well. We're going to be doing that in a different wash. So we want to really get in now to all these areas. There is quite a lot of the rest of the miniature that we've got to cover in this flesh wash. So uh, that includes our, our grey base that we have here for her as well. We want to make sure we go over with a strong tone on that. Really making sure we're going to get into all these recesses. So again, just placing on a big lot, placing it on there and then pushing it around really trying to get into every uh, little nook and cranny with our wash and then anywhere it starts pulling up coming back in and either moving it around or just coming in with a empty brush and then just dabbing it on to soak it all up. And then once all that's dry what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some known oil from Citadel and we're going to be using that to uh, place the wash on our weapon that our half orc female is uh, wielding. So I like to use um, known oil or uh, any type of black wash for weapons. I feel it gives off a really cool uh, sort of worn metal or just sort of that realistic sort of metal color. That's generally why I go with known oil over metal. I just really like the effect that it gives off. But this, again, this is totally up to you.
with that, we have completed our half orc female from the Dungeons and Dragons Wiz Kids range. I hope this has been helpful, and you can see that since this, I made this orc have a whole lot of uh, leather on it and just browns in general, that it very easily could have gotten all muddy, muddied up in there if we had used uh, the same type of browns or extremely similar types of browns. So that's why I've chosen uh, the dark browns, our light browns, our fur brown, which is more of an orange brown, and then switching up some of the colors where it could all get lost in there by having our gray base and having leather straps as yellow rather than a brown has just made a lot of difference into varying all this uh, brown up, um, which just makes it pop a little bit more, especially when it's on the table. Just adding in those few colors can make it look a lot more than just a brown and green mess that could have been from a distance. But with that guys, I hope this has been helpful for you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.